Welcome to the Fast Cat Podcast. I'm your host, Frank Overton. Some call me the Big Cat. And I'm joined with Jackson Long. Hello, everyone in podcast land. And in Facebook land. Facebook land, YouTube land, wherever you are listening to this. Maybe this is maybe you're listening to this in two years' time. And we're, we're back right. in, the, in the past, but... It's uh, the last day of February, it 2019. Is. Wow. I can't Insane. believe tomorrow is March already. It's almost March. Spring is around the corner, and therefore, our topic for today is talking about switching from base to race. What, we're, what we mean by that is base training, and then shifting over to interval training. Yeah, very important. Very important. When I Before I hired a coach, before I was a coach rider, I always knew you need to do base in the winter, and then you need to do intervals when the, the season came along. But I didn't really know what to do in between there and how, how you did it. And when that moment comes. That's like, right. That's a, it's a very specific kind of like switch, you know? Yeah. So that's what we're going to try to share with you today, switching from base to race. And someone on our Instagram feed said, I don't understand it. I've been doing sweet spot intervals all <laughs> winter. That's a good point. We should talk about that. That's sure. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but before before we launch into the like full on like meat of the podcast, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. Thanks again for everyone that listened to last week's Q and A podcast. It was pretty pretty big success. We were pretty stoked about it. A lot of good questions. Those are fun. Super fun. Um, and just to keep in mind uh, as you go through your your training and your your riding. Um, to keep you know keep some questions kind of rustling around in your mind because every four weeks again we'll do another uh, another Q and A um, and also I put up the full video version on our YouTube channel if you just type in Fast Cat Coaching um, and each question is time stamped in the description of that video so that you can um, just jump to like if you look at you look in there and you see like oh this question is relevant to me just click it and it mm. will go directly to the question just so you don't have to go through the full hour plus video. Just go straight to the topic you want to listen to. Yeah, and yeah. definitely like subscribe and, and all that because we're going to start putting up more videos and especially as the weather gets nice, hopefully we can get some actual like on bike footage, some more like cool, you know, cool, more exciting videos than, than the podcast. Of course, use code 25 podcast to save 25% on <laughs> your training plan. Um, and then share the podcast with your friends and family. Yeah. It's a super helpful way to not only get our information out there a little bit more, but help, help your friends out that might be, you know, want needing to learn a little bit more about training, about cycling. This is a, you know, we, we try our, our focus here is to, to bring some more information that's helpful and tactical and, and practical for, for cyclists. And, and it's always helpful to share that with someone else. That's right. Yeah. Th subscribe to YouTube. If you're list watching on Facebook Live right now, tag a, tag a friend or teammate uh, that you think might want to listen that hasn't yet. And of course, all of our podcasts, we, we host them on the fastcatcoaching.com website. So check them out there and you can listen to them at your, at your leisure. A lot, of, a lot of people commuting to and from work or, or on the trainer. Yeah, have uh, been telling us they've been enjoying our podcast. So thanks for thanks for listening. Well, now that we got the uh, the housekeeping, should we get into the, yes. the meat? Yes. Okay. So switching from base to race, we are actually podcasting about a training tip I wrote this time last year, also titled "Switching from Base to Race," and well, there's an image on that uh, in that in that training tip. It's on our website. Just uh, search. Switching from base to race under the training tip section. But I took a moment to draw that image. So we don't have a way to share the image on the live Facebook feed. Um, maybe we'll get that image into the into the YouTube video. Yeah, I'll put it in the YouTube yeah. video and we'll, we'll try and post it into like the Facebook group and the page and stuff after the, after the show. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what we're talking about is, you know, we've, we were mentioning um, uh, CTL and... and uh, you know, master CTL and training camp. So this kind of comes along. Oh, I just shared that, that training tip article with everyone. So check that out while we're talking. Um, that's what we're going to be podcasting about today. So, so what we mentioned is this is the culmination of the, our two previous podcast topics, master CTL and training camp. And so what we're talking about now is you've, uh, 
you've been you've been doing sweet spot training. This would be like a, a you know the final push. This is where you hit your peak CTLs, and then maybe you use a training camp right here to to get to that that peak CTL. And then you get done with that training camp, you're going to take a rest, and then you have say six weeks to go to your a, your a race. So you're gonna to totally shift the style of your training away from sweet spot here where you're raising CTL. Now the goal of your training is not to raise CTL, but just to focus on your raw race specific power output. Sharpening the sword. Sharpening the sword. Yeah, and so you do that with, uh, with intervals, uh, race specific intervals. And uh, we have a bunch of interval plans on our website. And, and what I like to do for my athletes is I want to define the power demands of their races. Are they a time trialist? Are they a road racer? Do they do crits? Is it cyclocross? Is it mountain biking? Those, the type of race you race in depends on what type of uh, intervals you should do. And it goes back to just the physiology. If you're, if you're Phil Gaiman, you're gonna concentrate on hill climbing and steady state maximal threshold power, just like time trialist. If you're, Doing a road race with a five minute climb, that's VO2s. If you're a criterium racer, it's a lot of anaerobic work. That's uh, your sprint work, it's 30 second intervals, it's zone six, one minute intervals, of course sprints. If you're a mountain biker, mountain biking is, well cross country mountain biking is largely anaerobic. Believe it or not, if you look at the power file of the mountain biking race or ride, it's a lot of short bursty power. 400 watts here for 10 seconds, 500 watts here for 20 seconds, and that's to get up over the rough terrain and through a, a technical section. So a lot of people think mountain biking is zone four, like, a, like climbing, and it can be, it depends on the course. But the point is, a lot of anaerobic work is involved in mountain biking, and that's what you want to do right here. And I think before we started live on the podcast, for a long time before I was a coached athlete, I knew you did, I knew you did base in the winter and you did intervals when the season started, but I didn't know the how, how and the, the why of when you transferred between the two. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what we're talking about today. So check out that graph, you know, and we've referenced this in previous podcasts and weeks before. It's like, can you peak too early? And that, that's how this is from. And you know, what do you do here? Do not, do, in order to get the most out of your body, and you know to adapt the most to the training stimulus of your intervals you don't want to be building here you're no longer concentrating on tss or ctl you're not trying to build really recovery is the name of the game and this is where you do raw full gas zone four five and six intervals and then this is a six week time frame and you're going to time that in relation to your a race here let's just say this is memorial day we have about 13, 14 weeks from Memorial Day. So what we're talking about is a six weeks final push with like a sweet spot part three training plan, maybe a training camp, peak CTLs, take a rest week, make the switch to do race specific intervals. That's it, podcast done. Yeah, uh, it's over. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that, that is it in a nutshell. So I think like maybe the best place to start then is, is okay, so let's, we, let's determine, you know, the A race. And then mm -hmm. like, I think from, from what, it, you know, from your experience and the experience of coaching athletes for forever, um, like what, what's the rationale for, for backing it up? Like, cause I think that's, I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. a really interesting way to look at it. And I mean, it, it obviously makes sense, but where it's like, okay, well, I mean, that goes back to a podcast we did forever ago, of like mm -hmm. mapping out your race calendar, mm -hmm. which race is your main priority. And I guess Memorial Day is a good example, but how does it work if there's races in here? Like if, if you have some B, some C or B races leading mm -hmm. into it, mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of people just get a little bit overwhelmed, myself included, when I have a race in say May or July or whatever, that I'm really targeting, like it, it's hard to, to kind of map out exactly how to time it well. That's a good question. So this is your A race. And we, you know, this is like, you know, what we podcasted back in, I think it was October, November, and you're working backwards from your A race and you want to allow time to do intervals, 
to, to do base. So this could be like 12 weeks from here to here. Now you can race during here. This is what we call B or C races. These are also training races, races that will also help you sharpen the sword. And what you're doing here is, you know, you're just managing, you know, taking a rest day the day before the race. But here, you're actually going to take like, this could be a taper. Um, this could be a rest week. This is your most important race that you're working backwards from. And uh, you've already planned it out. One of the reasons why I, I wanted, I wrote about this last year is because we noticed a lot of people would just do this before their A race. And so they would leave a lot of uh, cards on the table. Cards on the table. And so a lot of times people will email me or say, what plan should I do four weeks before their A race? And at that point, you're kind of in, I guess, college exam cram mode. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not ideal, but you really, if it's a choice between sweet spot and intervals, I would do intervals all the time. And so remind me again the benefit of, of sh like throwing your CTL up, your volume base up, mm -hmm. and then, and like, like what's the purpose of doing that and then going into intervals? Is that just to like keep the engine at a, functioning at a pretty high level in order to do those intervals or mm -hmm. like what like why do you need to have the high ctl in order to like prepare for that six weeks of intervals basically yeah so this is the aerobic foundation and the better aerobically trained you are the more support you will have to do the, the harder work on top of that so it's just a you know it's the free old pyramid and I mean, it's like, it's like, this is your aerobic foundation yeah. and you start doing intervals and this is how you're going to reach peak performance. I mean, so when you time this with this together, that's where you're going to, um, you know, just see, that's when you're going to rip the cranks off, see the, the highest power outputs. This is when the, the when you do the two to, together, you can really achieve, you know, like your best possible, uh, performances but you don't it's two things it's bass and and the intervals it's not one or the other if you if if you've been planning and so that's why we're talking about it now that's why it's important to switch away from bass a lot of athletes right now are doing long rides on the weekends when the weather is good or and when they're not working and then during the week they're doing um well then that's when they would start to do their intervals so that's kind of what the like a, I call it group ride season. And the group rides that you're doing are hard. They're harder than the traditional base training rides. Yeah. You know, everyone kind of gets the bit in between their teeth. They start riding harder. You know, um, you're getting into some race simulations, some attacks, some counter attacks, some chases, some breakaways. That's all good. I'm a huge fan of the, the hard group ride in this, in this like final, final CTO push. You want to like get tired. You want to generate a lot of fatigue and get to the point when you get to here, you're like, whew, I really need this rest week. I'm really looking forward to it. But I promise you when, when you take a good rest week, you'll feel really fresh here and you'll start crushing your intervals. Is there a place for these hard group rides that are long and maybe pretty intense and fatiguing in that six weeks of intervals? Or, or is it like more mm -hmm. short and sweet kind of workouts yeah yeah so will your overall volume during so if you've been doing 10 and 12 hour weeks here or 8 to 10 hour weeks here your total weekly hours um you know would be like 6 to 8 or 8 to 10 it's less but here's the kicker um so your interval workouts during the week are short maybe you've been doing hour and a half sweet spot training and then now you're going to go down to like hour hour 15 minutes with you you may be doing like crisscross intervals or over unders and the the over under workouts kind of begin to there's a little bit of intensity in there so that that's what we tried to design into our sweet spot part three plan you're beginning to to tickle into those race intensities with crisscross intervals and over unders you're doing those on either side of of uh of like sweet spot and tempo and so since the goal is like during your intervals phase, like the goal is to recover, 
crush intervals. So your interval workouts may be like an hour. Yeah. Um, just the, you're not trying to build, so you don't need to um, Put a worry about TSS. Volume. Yeah. And then you rest on the weekend, so you can do a hard group ride. You can do a training race or like a real race. One thing um, to th remember, you know, like right now, everyone's trying to do like the most training they can do. Like three hour group rides seem kind of short to a lot of riders. So a lot of people are doing like four and fives. But once you get into that interval phase, ride really hard for like two and a half, three hours. Most road races and circuits in the US, even for, except for maybe professional level are pretty on the three hour yeah. range. I mean, granted, there's some three plus for for masters races, but those are few before between. Think about, and I like to think in in the three hour range, really hit it out, ride hard and aggressively for three hours, go home and recover, and then, um, yeah, you move on. Like if that's a Saturday, then you do like a shorter ride on Sunday. You don't want to try to do that five hour epic ride on Sunday because you're going to recover Monday. But you may want to do intervals on Tuesday, and especially for us masters, if you've ridden hard two days in a row, you may not be recovered by Tuesday to throw down good watts. And I'm sure there's some 20 year olds that can do that. So it's a, it's slightly different training. Yeah. I want to talk, I want to ask and kind of dig into this kind of area of confusion probably for a lot of people, which is like, what's the difference between like sweet spot base intervals and these workouts and switching like because it seems like you were saying before we started recording i think mm -hmm. where people are like asking you or emailing you like well okay i get this whole switching from base to race thing but i feel like i've been doing intervals yeah all base season i've been with, doing sweet spot yeah intervals. yeah like what's like how, what does that switch look like and what is the rationale for doing mm -hmm. those sweet spot efforts and then like how is these, how are these other race specific shorter intervals different? Mm -hmm. Primary difference is, so zones two, three, and sweet spot are not as hard as you can. Intervals zone four, five, and six are full gas. Yeah. And you, we have your zones and everything, but that's the important switching, right? At that, that threshold. And so sweet spot, we design training plans and prescribe intervals with intervals because you're modulating your power, but you're not going as hard as you can in, in base training. Sweet spot is advanced aerobic endurance, but it's not full gas. When you go over up into the threshold stuff for time trials, hill climbs, you know, mountain biking and so forth, that's when you're, you're going as hard as you can. You have your zones, so you, you know that, but VO2 max intervals, full gas, anaerobic intervals, full gas. So that's kind of where I put the, the distinction and you, in order to adapt to the training, it's much more stressful, uh, the interval training, the zone four, five, and six. Yeah. I did, I've already switched from base to race. I did some VO2s Tuesday. Yeah. And, uh. Because when is your A race? Crusher? Uh, A race would be Crusher, also the, the Oat Route Asheville. Mm. And, um, this is a getting off topic, but we had had. Uh, some horrible snow days and uh, I it was coming off a rest week and um, I like to do the workouts that I prescribed for my athletes so I wanted to do a vo2 workout just to remind myself of the the technique and uh, <laughs> it's yeah a little bit yeah. um, and everything but uh but anyway so I did vo2s and uh, I forgot my point the so I've switched, but that was full gas, you know, I, it, and it, you're just, you're pushing as hard as you can. So whereas in sweet spot intervals, it's like you're holding it back, you're holding it back, don't go too hard, do a lot of volume of, of sweet spot. But VO2s, I had set, you know, two sets, two by four minutes on, four minutes off, eight minutes in between sets, go home. And I was thoroughly shellacked after, yeah. after those. I feel like I'm still needing like a couple more weeks of base because mm -hmm. it's just like you said, the weather here has been so bad mm -hmm. that the di it's like, it seems like Murphy's law. Like the days that I have time to actually train mm -hmm. are horrible. And mm -hmm. so it's like, I can, I, you know, and so I've been doing like sweet spot efforts on the trainer recently, mm -hmm. but I haven't, there just hasn't been time or like the good, good enough weather really to go on like long four yeah. or five hour rides and so it's like what that's the other reason why i did vo2s is because it was really cold and i just 
I didn't have the gumption to do two yeah. hours in the cold. So I was like, I'm just going to go crush it for 75 minutes. Yeah. It's cold, but I'll be generating body heat. Yeah. And so what if you're kind of slacking on base and you're mm -hmm. like, like when we're talking about the kind of cramming for the exam, Yeah. I feel like that's a common, mm -hmm. a common thing. So what if you are, are here, your CTL is low. What are you going to do with that? That's, <clears throat> this is the, you know, the question I'll get from, from athletes for the next uh, six to eight weeks. And so the answer, that's why we came up with our sweet spot part three plan. It's got the crisscrosses, the over unders and sweet spot part three, you're raising the CTL. You're not doing full gas intervals, but you're beginning to do some VO2 and threshold work. So you're doing both, which is contrary to what we just said, but you're kind of in a, crisis mode you're cramming so you're doing you're doing you're doing a lot but you're not yeah so a lot of people are like okay my ctl is 50 and it's like well how many weeks do you have before your a race right so uh, so say let's use let's use seven weeks as an example say you have your a race in seven weeks the boulder bay is coming up um that's april 6 how many weeks is that that's what that's like six seven that's... weeks well, and that's not... That's actually six weeks yeah, on it's the like dot. Five, yeah, yeah, it's like five or six weeks. Okay, so say you're coming off the couch, but you want to do well in the Boulder Roubaix. What do you do? Three weeks of aggressive sweet spot part three style base with crisscross over-unders, then three weeks of VO2s and one minute anaerobic work and VO2 work. That's that's it. Don't, don't do all intervals because you don't have a good base. Don't do all base because you're going to race and you need to prepare for those specific power outputs. So that's how I would <clears throat> customize it. Three and three. Um, don't worry about rest weeks if you're coming off a What about couch. doing long rides with hard efforts sprinkled in? Yeah. I mean, that's great TSX like, rides. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, that's kind of like how yeah. I think I'm going to have to start doing it, especially getting ready yeah. for, you know, the oat root and, and these, these kind of later these like semi early season races yeah because you want to do that all in here okay but I, I know where you're going jackson you're talking about doing it like over over in here yeah now here's why well no like like kind of around now like mm -hmm. you know like long three four five hour rides that also involve some intense mm -hmm. efforts you can do that and, and you bring up a good distinction which is already what ann has has commented on why so there's a big difference in the physiological and power demands of a gravel race than mm -hmm. there is of a, of a road race yeah okay so in a road race everything could come down to what you can do in five minutes so can you do six and a half watts per kilogram for five minutes to win the climb or make the break you don't do that in gravel racing gravel yeah. racing is a whole different different style of, of racing. So I guess to, to clarify, what we're talking about here, a race, this would be road races, crits, time trials, mountain bike races, cyclocross, so like that. With gravel, gravel now, we, we were talking about most traditional road races are like in the three hour range. You know, that the gravels really are six, double that. Yeah. So there's no VO2 efforts really in gravel races. I mean, there are, but it's not like the make or break. Most gravel races are just, can you... Attrition. Attrition and diesel. How fit are you? And so the um, the gravel racer, it's th th this style that we take is just, um, <laughs> really, it's, it's drive your CTL up here. And uh, during that time, that's when you're doing your, your heart, your threshold work. Yeah your hard stuff, your hard group rides, and then you can do like a week off and then you're ready to race, or you can do a, um, a two week taper and then that you do that in time with your- So these kind of intervals aren't necessarily a super applicable to things mm -hmm. like the Crusher or mm -hmm. That's right. Dirty Kanza or that, yeah. Steamboat Gravel, something yeah. like that. Okay. You're never really gonna wanna do one minute intervals for the Crusher. Um, and then now everyone's like, oh, anaerobic is a very yeah. important component of where your power comes from. And that's true, but I think you're going to get that anaerobic work from your hard group rods and um, maybe some, some preparatory uh, training races. 
but I don't think you want to waste time doing two sets of three by one minute on, one minute off for the for the crusher. Um, do hard group rides where you go hard anaerobically, um, but maybe not in a, a structured format. Okay. Yeah. So that's an important distinction between gravel racing and how that differentiates between most traditional USA cycling racing. Um, questions. Chris Butler asks, so Frank, you're switching 10 weeks before your first day race. Um, no, not, no, not, not really necessarily. Um, I'm trying to understand your question. We'll just oh, because on. I mentioned I was doing VO2s. Yeah. No, I, I, because I was coming off of a rest week and it was cold and I really wanted to, to go for it. Um, once, once it warms back up and uh, I don't have to battle the weather, I'm going to continue my build. I'm going to continue my build. I'm going to take a rest week. So that, this is completely different than what we're podcasting about. Because gravel, the way you structure gravel and the oat root is completely different from yeah. this. This is... Like I was saying, time trial, road, um, mountain bike, mountain bike cr criteria, cyclocross. So my my the way I'm doing it is is much different. I'm gonna do the Boulder Roubaix as a a training race, uh, but it's still gonna be in it's I'm as in, during my my build towards the crusher. Sorry for that confusion. Um, what are Chad Fisher asks? What are the consequences of not switching to race soon enough? Well, it's kind of like what we alluded to. You're gonna have a, a good aerobic base, but when the race goes hard, when the road turns up, when the peloton goes fast, you're gonna be in the red really quick and that's where you risk getting dropped. So you, you, you know, your FTP could be you know, nice and high, your CTL could be good high, good and high, but when you have to go 120% of your FTP, you're gonna be blown, you won't be prepared for that. So you wanna, you wanna prepare for that, you gotta be able to, you know, turn that throttle and deliver the power when when it goes hard. And give enough time too to recover from that because like one of the things that I noticed back when I was racing, you know, a lot of the NRC calendar and some of these big races is like, you know, you would go through the base, you know, phase and then you would really throw up the, the intensity and you'd be doing all these these hard efforts. And then once you kind of got into the racing, like if you just went straight from like the race specific intervals, if you, if you rushed it, it was hard to like take some time off to let that absorb and let those adaptations occur before the first big races, you know, because like once you kind of dig yourself into that hole of like fatigue, like really mm -hmm. deep level fatigue, mm -hmm. and you, then you start getting into like these big stage races or, you know, a, a full mountain bike season or whatever it is you're doing, it's hard to crawl back out of that unless you take a big break off because mm -hmm. you know and that that also comes back to building that aerobic base to be able to you know lay that foundation down for the, those intensities so that you can recover from them properly and then i mean of course that gets into all of the sleep and food and everything yeah. and so it's you know it's all it's all interconnected but i think one of the problems with not switching to base I mean, um, switching from, from like to race early enough is that you don't, mm -hmm. it's everything is so like compressed and rushed and then you don't have that time to like really recover from those, those efforts before the race happens. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, you want to do this predicated on having a good, good base here. This will result from this from a lot, lot better power output, but, uh, to do a bunch of intervals without having a proper base is, it's be, well, it's better than nothing. It's gonna definitely prepare you, but you could have prepared even better. Matthew asks, what is the best way to address the very top end, AKA sprint power within the race phase? Sprints, baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the race phase, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, I think what you're talking about is during this six weeks is, man, sprint workouts. Um, and make sure you do them when you're fresh. Make sure you do sprints after, you know, one of the, I'm a big fan of the, the hard group rides on the weekends is because most group rides around, at least the ones that I've done, we like rot our brains into the ground and then on do the way back, sprints. there's a city limit sprint. Yeah. You know, if you want to, and everyone is tired, but 
that's how a good road race is or, or a crit, you know, it's been hard, 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 and then everyone still sprints at the end. So Matthew, do, do something like that. Um, you can do specific sprint workouts. A lot of times I'll have athletes do sprint workout on a Tuesday when they've had a hard weekend. And what I mean by that is you're recovered enough to do a hard six second sprint. So the, uh, the training on a Tuesday will be zone two, 90 minutes. And for the middle one hour, you do six sprints, 10 minutes apart. So you do a sprint at 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, so forth. And they're max all out and, you know, just choose a mailbox, a pole, top of a hill or something and just bury it. And then you just kind of spin in, in 10 minutes. And, and then I think you do something like that. Um, then you're, you're like good to go for a hard interval workout on a Wednesday. Yeah. And another thing we were talking about bef like before we even set up earlier today, we were talking about like indoor trainers and doing like really hard, intense efforts on there. And one thing that is important, I think about the, the interval phase is being able to do these hard efforts outside and using the terrain mm -hmm. to learn how to mm -hmm. go fast, go hard, you yeah. know, on, on varying terrain yeah. on hills and, you know, downhills and stuff like that. And sprinting, I think is a key example of that. I mean, sprinting and winning races and, uh, you know, unleashing that, that mm -hmm. power also comes down a lot to positioning, to yeah. knowing the terrain, knowing when to go hard, mm -hmm. how to like wind that sprint up. And that's going to be pretty hard to do on a trainer. Before we went live, Jackson and I were talking about Zwift racing <laughs> and riding the rollers, the benefit of, yeah. and this is where what he's talking about comes into play. Um, yes, you can sprint on Zwift, you can sprint on the trainer, but it is a technique, it is a skill, and you need to practice that. And that's, again, hard group ride um, with a city limit sprint or maybe just a shootout in an office park group ride. You've got to practice sprint coming off of a wheel and knowing when to come off sensing when that guy in front of you is just beginning to slow down and looking how much further you have to go to the line and coming out of his draft and going for it, you don't get that on Zwift. I mean, you can simulate that or say you do, but it's not the same as, as outdoors. So if you're doing crits, coming up here in, in March and April, training crits, phenomenal. Training crits go fit very well in here, yeah. including midweek ones. Just substitute those over top of a, of a, um, of an interval workout. Same way with short track mountain bike races. This would include cyclocross training races during the week. Um, yeah. So there is a skill based component, um, to, to right. your training and you get a lot of that on the group rides. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, sometimes I'll have athletes that will have been indoors all winter and they get to the first race and they are a fish out of water in the Peloton. They're, they're opening up two bike link gaps because they're not that um, comfortable yet with drafting and, and riding in close quarters. And that's like a, something you want to practice. And again, the group rides on, on Saturdays are uh, a great way to do that. Just to work on how you maneuver in the Peloton, attack and, and counter attack and, and, and all that. So everyone that's on Zwift, get outside when you can. The, I was telling this to an athlete just the other day. It's like, we're on Zwift now. We're doing hour and a half rides. Spring is like six weeks away. Hang on, try to get outside whenever possible. At this point, stop using the trainer as a crutch and get out there. You're gonna make more watts outside. You're gonna make higher sprint power because you're leveraging on the bar you're using that that terrain it's 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 gonna be you're gonna get more out of your body out of, from outdoor training yeah um i that of course that doesn't apply to swift racing but that's not what we're podcasting about <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different whole different podcast okay i think adam's got a good one yeah i mean do we want to address uh this one like I'm, oh I'm, sure I think that's a good question from from chad asks about um, uh, a second peak in the season after you do an initial six week race program, do you go back to, to sweet spot two or three? Um, or does it just depend on time until the second peak? 
Great question, Chad. So now we're talking about from here, you've had your first A race. What you're probably going to be on peak form here. So peak form lasts three to four, five, six weeks. And after that, you're going to run out of base, take a mid season break. It's probably a future podcast topic when to take a mid season break. And then, yes, you want to do sweet spot. You've got to build back up. Your CTL will have gone down as planned. And then you got to build back up. And then how much you build back up for how long is, again, this is the exact same thing we're talking about. you got to build base. Then you got to do race-specific power output. So really, just take what we're talking about, these 12 weeks, and you're going to apply them post-season post break and um, you know, repeat. The thing about a second peak or the second half of the season, this usually comes after 18 weeks or 20 weeks of base building, maybe even the resistance training. Most athletes, amateur athletes, are really successful at peaking for their first A race. And if that second A race is too close together, it becomes really challenging because you don't have enough time to, to build back up your base. Um, the two peak season is... That's like the holy grail. It's really difficult. You can have a good second half of your season, um, but you may not peak like you did the, the first half of your season. Uh, well, we have, a, we have some more questions we're taking here. What was the question? About setting heart rate zones. Mm. Well, I think we're podcasting about switching from base to race. So... Um, what other questions would you all have about the, the timing? I think uh, one of the things I, I guess I would just say is take, if, you, or if you're feeling a little behind at this point and you need to do base and then now you, want, you understand that you need to do intervals and what kind, and say you don't have 12 weeks, say you have, like what we were talking about earlier, say you have eight weeks, so do four weeks of base, four weeks of intervals. Um, say... Your first race is not an A race, but it's a B race, and you want to do, you want to do well. You want to represent. You want to hold your own. So maybe, maybe you do six weeks of base, and then do two weeks of intervals. So um, that's your B race, and then you allow more time between your next A race. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so say, but you may have like a C race. You could do a C race right here. You'll be, you'll be good. It'll hurt like heck. Um, and you'll be just coming off of your base, but you'll be aerobically conditioned. When the when it has to go zone six, zone five, you may be a little bit underprepared, but that's a that's okay. Yeah, I mean, because it's also it's like if you look, I know it's it's not a it's not super practical, and you shouldn't and you should take this all with a grain of salt. But if you look at like you know world tour riders, a lot of times they'll have the early season races as kind of like their B races. They're using those to kind of like you know sharpen the sword for maybe the the giro mm -hmm. or some of these big early season targets then they'll do a lot of teams will do like mid-season training camps so they'll do like uh, a tour training camp you know mm -hmm. to like simulate some of the rides go recon some of the course uh climbs and the in the tour um so they're what they're doing is they're kind of ramping up early season take a little bit of a break and then ramp it back up for in prep for the tour or whatever race they're going to do yeah, and to use the Grand Tour riders, the Tour de France riders, I mean, the Tour de Suisse or the Dauphine is the yeah. ultimate stage race prep. Yeah. And before that, they're probably doing specific recon of the climbs. Some of the domestiques will do the Giro. Yeah. You know, the, the Giro Tour double, that's a whole different podcast topic. But a lot of those riders, the Grand Tour riders, the non-GC ones, um, will be coming off of like the the... Ardennes classics or the or the cobble classics right the sprinters and and uh the all-arounders um well, what else guys so talking about switching from, from base to race i guess it's it would be easy to talk about all about base which we covered with masters ctl and training camps but then you come back from that training camp and don't keep trying to build base that, that makes your training redundant you kind of have to move on. It's a question of time best spent. You don't want to keep trying to, you know, doing the same thing over and over. This is just periodization. You know, Friel 
cause it like builds base and then builds one, two, three. This would be like your final build in the, in what, you know, with what uh, Friel advocates. And then this would be, I mean, technically it could be a build. I just call this your race specific, specific phase. So maybe, maybe give some examples of like specific workouts or like some of your favorite kinds of uh, intervals and like what, you know, what sort of workouts people could be expecting to do. Because we talked about crisscross, uh -huh. over-unders, um, mm -hmm. VO2s, but maybe just to give people a little taste of like what, what kind of like workout, like just like walk through a workout just to give that kind of like context for what we're talking about. Yeah, so if we're talking about here, you're preparing to make the switch, and so you're you're putting the finishing touches, the cherry on top to your CTL, to your build. Um, we're talking crisscross, over-unders, hard group rides, and just general TSS. This is where you're looking to maximize. This is where you're trying to ride as much as possible. This is where taking a Friday off or using a, like, a spring break to do a training camp put the capper on your, on your CTL. Um, that, that's what we're doing. So gosh, um, Monday off Tuesday, like sweet spot crisscross intervals, or as you progress, move on to like over unders where you're doing a, like a anaerobic effort for 30 seconds to start in like a eight to 15 minute sweet spot interval. And you hold it steady, sweet spot, sweet spot, sweet spot. And then you're emulating like when you're coming to the top of a climb or the peloton goes hard again and then you go like zone six again for 30 seconds so you do 30 seconds at the beginning and at the end of a sweet spot interval um that's what we mean by tickling that that race intensity the zone six so you're mixing zone six with sweet spot and do like do like three or four of those and not only is that good aerobically it's good anaerobically it's race specific for like what happens at the bottom and then the top of a climb or what happens in a surgy Peloton and generates a large TSS, which all goes into raising your CTL, which is the goal of yeah. your training here. So you're doing a little bit of race prep here. And um, that would be an over under. Now crisscrosses can be really hard that you can make them really easy. If you alternate between like tempo and sweet spot, that's like introductory. You can alternate between sweet spot and VO2, sweet spot and uh, three, sweet spot and anaerobic. So like three minutes, so you do like a, let's say you do a 10 minute crisscross interval. Uh, start off at sweet spot and at minute three, you do one minute at zone six. And then after that one minute of zone six, you go back to sweet spot. And then you go back to zone six. And then you finish. Then you go back to sweet spot and then back to zone six. So we're, that's the crisscross. You're going yeah. up, down, and around. You can make those as hard or as easy as you as you want. Um, but the, the whole point is large TSS, good aerobically, good anaerobically, race-specific. And you know the, the crisscrosses are like when you hit a switchback on a climb. Or when you're time trialing in the road, you hit a roller and you got to just keep your momentum going. Or in a road race when an attack goes off the front and the peloton surges. So you're getting into a little bit of what's, what you're going to face in a race, but you're not committing to a full-on one minute on, one minute off type of interval. And so you could do those on Tuesdays, even Wednesdays. You might do a group ride or a TSS ride on like a Wednesday, Thursday. Friday would be off. Then Saturday is going to be your hard group ride. That's where you're looking for TSSs of like 150 to 250, maybe 300, depending on your level. And then on Sundays, I like to have athletes do zone two work. Usually you're pretty, pretty worked by, by Sunday. So it's like just sit there, chill, do a long zone two endurance ride, three to, three to five hours-ish. And then, of course, Monday off. In, in repeat so that would be a typical week during a uh, like a, a final build phase as you're preparing to switch from base to race okay yeah uh... so what other questions does everyone have about switching from base to race um what do we got jackson not too much i mean i think you know it's just it's 
yeah, it's good to stay ahead of the curve, obviously, and kind of like think about these things and not wait until it's too late. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, weather, weather dependent. I mean, I think that's the hardest thing right now for a lot of, a lot of places. The weather has been pretty Mm -hmm. intense this winter. Mm -hmm. Um, and so snowed in Tucson last week. Yeah. And so it's like, (laughs) I I, I mean, even in, in, in Southern California, like the weather's been weird. Yep. So I think you just have to do the best you can. Um, and I think, yeah, the most important thing is just that consistency of like keeping the, the base going, keeping the, the TSS up and then, you know, when, and again, like the, the key component here is like, okay, when is your A race, your target race? Let's work backwards from there. We definitely, especially for people that have A races like me later in the summer, we still have some time to think about these things, but that's why we're talking about it now in order to, you know, get, get it on the, on your mind so that you can start working backwards, planning it out. Um, and so you have like a little bit more flexibility to work with. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we're, we're planners. We plan things. That's what we're talking about is planning. But, you know, I think in the, in the context of this, this is like where you're doing your eight to 12 hours a week and then you shift and maybe you're doing six to eight hours a week, but you're doing full gas intervals. And that is a great way to be, to arrive at the start line of this race going really fast. Yeah. Making a lot of watts. Yeah. All right, so I guess this is the Hail Mary time of the podcast. Yeah, I mean, yeah, get your get your questions in because uh, I think uh, I think we've covered about everything. Next week we're gonna actually talk about intervals. We kind of have alluded to it. We're gonna, you know, we mainly talked about this. Next week we're gonna talk about intervals, full gas, as hard as you can. Uh, we probably should mention uh, the sports psychology component of it, uh, the motivation component of it. We'll talk about race specificity. That's easy. Um, how many reps, sets, the, the load. Um, I, when I do, when I re- recommend VO2 max intervals, you know, it's obviously everyone knows they should do those, but it's like how much, what yeah. length, how many sets, how many reps, how many, what set break, how do you structure those in, uh, in the, in the training week, things like that. We'll talk about that. Cool. Um, <laughs> the sea otter. Well, uh, I used to do the May sea otter April. every year. I don't recall the exact date. Let's say the sea otter is mid-April, so that would be eight weeks. The to wait. The, so Tim asks, where should we be for sea otter XC? My question back to you would be: Let's assume it's eight weeks, right? Well, how's your base? Is your base really, really good? Or are you coming off of the couch and it's, it's nice and low? You know, um, is the sea otter your A number one race or is that your B race? And so that, that's the coaching question you wanna, you wanna ask yourself. My sense is that you're, you've been riding some but you can always stand to improve and you probably haven't done too many intervals yet. Intervals are, no, everyone rides all year round. That's mostly endurance work, but no one does intervals all, all year round. And so my sense is, Tim, assuming the, let's just say, this, sorry, the sea otter is eight weeks away. Do four more weeks of really good base, really drive that CTL up, then start doing intervals to, to get ready. Anaerobic work, um, one minuteers, and VO2s for the sea otter course. Um, a racer, the longest climb, you know, they're short. They're short than anything, except for that long fire road they use on the way back. That's like 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes, if they're using the long Fort Ord course like they mm. uh, did way back in when I raced it. Good question. Should we answer? Well, we kind of talked about that. So there's another question from Andrew about... Yeah. Structured, I like the structured workouts in these plans seem most con- conducive to road riding. How do we suggest adapting to dirt or mountain bike, including in the context of base to race switch? It's really the same. I mean, you can do all this work on your mountain bike. You can do all this work on your road bike, cyclocross bike, time trial bike. Gravel bike. I think you have to choose, What I, this is a common question, you have to choose terrain specific to the work that you need to do 
for that day. So if you're doing, you know, crisscross intervals, you can't go to like a, a, a fun mountain bike trail and ride single track where your power output is de dependent on the on the trail, not the what you're trying to do for your workout. So choose that wisely. A lot of mountain bikers will, you know, do their road bike for the really specific power work. And then when you have like an endurance work or a TSS or a hard ride, that's when they'll go do their, their mountain bike training. So if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's physiologically, it, it's, it's the same. So you want to choose the terrain and the bike that helps you meet to FTFP. Yeah. Tim followed up. You finished Sweet Spot Part 2. Well, I would do the last three weeks, last four weeks of your Sweet Spot Part 3. And then, if you haven't bought it, 25 podcast or leave a review, you get 25% off. And then get into the XC interval. So four weeks, four weeks. So the final four weeks of Sweet Spot Part 3, and then maybe the first four weeks of the XC intervals plan. Yep. Cool. Um, do we have any more? No more. Okay. Well, now we're really at the Hail Mary <laughs> part. So, uh, yeah, next week we're going to talk about, talk about intervals. If you have any questions about what type of intervals you should do, you know, let it, let us know. Um, but yeah, you know, time trial intervals, road race intervals, it's, it's all, we're, we're pretty opinionated on it. So we'll get, we'll get into that. Um, field test at the end of base, set zones for intervals. Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, at the end of Sweet Spot Part 3, there's a there's a field test. So, one thing we didn't talk about, I mean, so you do your Sweet Spot Part 3, you take your rest week, and what's waiting for you? A field test. Woo! Boom! You know what you can do also? That could be a training race. That could be, and here in Colorado, uh, traditionally, they had the the Lookout Mountain Hill Climb, yeah. remember the collegiate mm -hmm. race? Yeah. Perfect time to finish your base and do your uh, do your field test in a race. G given uh, uh, you know that the Lookout Mountain Hill Climb would be your C race. Yeah. Not, not that. So Just yeah. Some training effort. Yeah. Cool. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Share, subscribe. And yeah, let, let us know what, what you'd like to hear from us, uh, you know, coming up, especially as it relates to intervals. Um, we'll, we'll be here same time next week. That's right. 11 a.m. next Thursday. Intervals. All right. Thanks, everyone. Later. Peace.